and also can see the JD. Uh, please comment in the chat so that we know that now we are actually live. So uh, JD, can we say something uh, to test your mic and see that? You know, Absolutely. Do, do you hear me well now? Good evening. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, thank yes, you I for can, joining I, in. I can hear you. You know. So let me see which other. Are there anybody right now in the moment? Mm -hmm. Or else we can give a couple of more minutes for people to join in. Yeah, no problem. So let me see. Okay, so before we actually start, uh, maybe we, sh we should uh, warm up the stage first. Uh, let me ask you some simple question. So, for example, okay, the audience actually would like to know what is the name of Yannick, you know, because I, I myself do not know why is it Yannick, you know, for your app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a very interesting uh, question that you asked and something that is very, very close to our heart. Um, mm -hmm. So the fact, uh, if if you break the term yarn it, right? Um, so yarn also mean uh, you know short stories, right? Oh, I so see. yeah, so yarns also mean short stories, and then uh, yarning is also the process of stitching uh, uh, as a process, right? And then when you when you take a piece of wool and you sort of stitch together things, right? So we literally took the noun yarn, which is story and yarning, which is the process of knitting, and brought them together to say, yarn it. Why don't you celebrate stories, right? And then why don't you stitch together your stories, good content, et cetera, et cetera, right? I see. Yeah, I, I, I read your, what you call your sales pitch, you know, in the website. You're talking about right. storytelling, you know, your content, you know, using uh, right. your platform. So I, I believe, yeah. you yeah. know, I can understand what is uh, yarning. Okay, we would like to know, okay, uh, as JD, as a founder, a startup founder, mm -hmm. uh, is yep. this your first startup or you have any other experience you know, before that? Yeah, no, this is, uh, this this would be my second. Uh, the previous one, <clears throat> uh, we, you know, I had done almost seven years with that startup. Uh, the name of the startup was Limbic, uh, Limbic Solutions Private Limited. We were building the first uh, enterprise grade augmented analytics platform uh, you know the whole promise was that uh, as a as an analytics user or as a business user you can literally interact with the system uh, in plain english language and it should be able to sort of uh, give you insights in the form of charts and graphs along with the narrative right uh, and you know while most of us uh, woken up to generative ai recently uh, we have been a generative AI uh, startup for a long time, right? Uh, we started building language models long time back, which now has taken shape to become large language models, etc. But that in our previous startup as well, <clears throat> you know, we had built everything from ground up. Uh, you know, we we got an exit as a part of that startup. We got an acquired. We got acquired by a huge uh, conglomerate based out of India. And so, you know, in a nutshell, short answer to your question is, um, I have almost spent the last 10 years now uh, in startups, leading, you know, playing different roles, largely in sales and marketing. Uh, that's where my domain is. And then, of course, uh, you know, that basically pivoted us to sort of building on it. Okay. That's good to hear because uh, I think you are not a first time uh, startup uh, founder. And you're the CEO of this right. company now. So may I know that you know uh, where is your team based, you know, or actually where is you based first? Right. So right now I'm based out of Bangalore. Uh, you know, I was before the pandemic had hit. I was in uh, the states, uh, was doing my time largely in India, largely at part of that in US. And you know, just before the pandemic hit, I sort of had to move back to India uh, to tend to some certain uh, you know responsibilities in here so right now i'm in india a uh, majority of my team uh, is in india you know a lot of us are in bangalore and a few of us are working remotely yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah before we actually start uh, i have some housekeeping to do because uh, i think as you can see from the right hand side on the chat you uh, know some right. names are actually with the name of the person as well as the photo some of them without right. the name and photo so guys uh, please uh, do us a favor, do yourself a favor, uh, click the link uh, 
called https chat.restream.io slash fbook, fb, sorry, Facebook, which is actually Facebook. This is link is actually give permission to restream to show your name and profile name, uh, profile photo to us in the back end. Because me, myself, and JD will not be able to see who is actually commenting if you don't give permission. So that is very important. And because right now we have about more than 23 person uh, in the stream, so it's good that we know to get to know each other better. So help yourself, uh, please do so. And if you have not done that, please do so now. Okay, uh, JD, and I would like to know because, I mean, not to say comment or critic, because there are right. so many AI writers or maybe AI content generators, you know, using AI right. basically <clears throat> based on ChatGPT on or others uh, um, uh, last language model. Mm -hmm. Why do you still want to go into this <laughs> sector, you know, <laughs> so-called uh, generative AI, you know, and your name is actually right. Yannick, you know, because the audience are actually very interested to know why should I buy another AI generator. No, I wouldn't say it's a, a, just another AI generator. It's something different, I know. So please tell them. Right. No, absolutely. So I'll, I'll take you back a little bit to Albert, what <clears throat> uh, uh, what we were discussing earlier. And since you had asked me as in, what was your previous experience? Uh, you know, so I was leading the global sales and marketing for my previous startup, uh, Limbic. You know, uh, we did fantastically when it comes to sales. You know, brilliant storytellers, we get into the room, we could have sold every piece of license in there. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if you ask me, how did I do or fare on my marketing responsibilities? I would probably say I didn't do well. You know, you know, we kind of became a failed marketer, right? To, and if, I, if we started, when we started delving down into deeper into, you know, what happened, what could we have done better? Look, there is, when you look at content marketing or content creation largely, there are two things that are very, very important, right? Uh, one, we should have a very prop good understanding of our audience, right? Uh, what is my brand and therefore what is my audience? What do they need? What are their struggles today? And therefore my content can sort of help them get overcome those challenges, right? So proper understanding of the audience as well as as a brand, you need to sort of create con content which is consistent and speaks to your brand values, right? As in, uh, you know, if, if I'm a brand which has an archetype of being a sage, I cannot be, be very quirky, right? Because brands are not built in a day. You know, what audiences hear from us visually, uh, what, what they uh, read of us, that makes the brand, right? Now... So basically, understanding of the brand, understanding of my audience becomes very, very critical to content marketing success. Sorry, I'm giving you a long answer, but that's critical number one. But the other piece of the success is that do we have the means to execute our marketing, content marketing largely, right? And when we say means, what do we need, right? As in, if you look at every piece of content, it travels uh, the space from where you have an idea saying, hey, this is a new piece of social media content or a blog that I would potentially write. You go through different stages, right? To do research, to finally write uh, or design that piece of content, then finally audit it to see, you know, whether it is working well, whether it is hitting the right notes or not. And then you finally publish that content to social media or whatever other marketing channels that you follow. And once you have done all of it, then you love to measure the content to see, you know, with, what did it do? Right? Did it get me the engagement? Did it bring in enough leads, etc.? Now, in that whole cycle, that entire travel, you are at least touching five to six different tools. You know, from starting from Google to find talking to you know Buzzsumo or you know same brush. There are plenty of tools to measurement tools. What we realized is that a lot of tools today are just focusing on a point problem or a point solutions what we realize is that can we make a more connected system, right? So if you bring those two things together to say, how do you sort of get a connected system which could literally be your companion from the point that you need to find ideas for your content to execute it and then finally publish it? And at the same time, can you create that content in a very personalized way, right? Which speaks to your audience, it is aligned to your brand. Now, those are the two tenets uh, or principles that Yarnit follows, 
right? And those are the two tenants that are required for your content marketing success. Okay. Yeah, I actually can Sorry understand. Sorry for the longish, longish <laughs> answer. I'm no, only no. This is actually that. a teaser, you know. So guys, uh, we should actually not listen to the teaser now. We should go to the meet now. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, officially, you know, Yannick, founder and CEO, uh, to actually go into the back end, have a look, you know, how is this five-in-one tool that can help us to create content, you know, to what they call audit our content, as well as distribute the content in social media. Please, Eddie, okay. share your screen. Sure, I would love to sort of, you know, uh, take, 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 the, take our community through, through the product itself. Hmm. Uh, just give me a moment. And folks, please, please stop me. Feel free to ask questions in between. Of course, I'll, I'll try to sort of take you through the entire journey before I did, you know, attend to those questions. But in, in between, if you have anything, just, just drop, you know, maybe Albert a note. I'm happy to take them later. Uh, Albert, just quickly, do you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen. You can start now. So guys, <laughs> uh, if you have any question, just put it in the chat and we will actually answer that after the demo. Please. Yeah, sure. Look, I think from a from Yarnit perspective, what we see are uh, plenty of our customers start their journey differently. What I'll try to do first, let me sort of do a quick, uh, you know, table stake information, what Yarnit is capable of doing, and then I'll take you to to actually the core elements of it, right? Now, from a from a use case perspective, right? As in, what are the things that you can possibly do you with Yarnit? One, anything that you need for your social media marketing, right? whether you are creating things for LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or as recent as threads, you can probably create all kinds of content in here. Now, what are the things that you can do in here? Of course, you can design. So there are certain use cases where, which are more design forward, where the system should be able to design things for you, write things for you, right? And then there are use cases, for example, a LinkedIn text only post or an article, which are more writing forward. And therefore you would see, the system generating that article or that blog for you. Now, then the next piece of use case, which is, you know, an absolute essential when it comes to businesses. Now, if you see, there are plenty of business use cases, but if I have to sort of broadly classify them, you know, you will see content, which is for your marketing communication, right? Which is more towards the press releases, et cetera. Then you will see content, which is more tuned for your sales processes. And third is for your product, right? So, you know, if you look at why do I make that classification in here, if you're writing a case study or a testimonial or creating a small presentation for your sales, right? You will see plenty of these uh, coming around the realm of sales, right? Even as simple as creating a sales landing page if you're running a campaign, right? Then there are different product use cases that you would find, whether you are writing a product prop value proposition, description, product features, you should be able to use the power of Yarnit to create all of that, right? And then the third one is around the marketing communication, right? The marketing communication, like I said, could be a press release, could be an event that's happening. It could be a company update, and you should be able to sort of create all these content. The other one is basically where you know, you will see, see a lot of our customers starting today is the long form writing, which means, you know, you should be able to write your entire blog through Yarnit. You should be able to also create them in the form of listicle blogs. And if you have a literally a structure ready, you can also sort of create the introduction, outro, outline, etc. The fourth use case uh, that you would see as an umbrella use case are basically your emails. Now, these are emails, uh, email use cases which are typically all companies need, whether you are um, writing a cold email to your customer, finding a new prospect, or you are promoting your product, or you are basically made some new changes to the product and therefore writing emails and you know informing your customer base. Now, if you do not find a certain use case that is getting covered in here, of course you can go in and use the freestyle version of it where you can do it freestyle design or you can also write it freestyle. Yeah, those are basically the quick use cases around it. You know, the most important part when it comes to Yarnit, of course, is the brand setup, right? Albert, any questions in between? Uh, if you see, happy to sort of take them uh, in, 
on that particular use case piece okay uh that's my question i have want to ask this question uh, since the sure, beginning sure. Uh, I know that you are using some AI langu last language model. What models right. actually are you using? Actually, you know, because that's important. Right. So there are, you know, uh, there are different models that we use for different use cases, right? And it is determined on what is giving us the best output, right? So behind the scenes, we work with different open source models which we have trained. It, you know, there are models like Llama, there are models like Falcon and Cloud. Right. These are the three open source models that we use. In terms of proprietary models, <coughs> we use uh, GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. Right. So these are, you know, technically five models that you would see uh, happening using used for text generation. Right. However, you will also find a lot many different models, our own proprietary models, uh, you know, being used. Whether it is coming for your image recommendation, icon recommendation, etc whether it is used for your auditing of the content. I'll touch upon those uh, in, in our in our uh, session a little later. Okay, so good to know. Right. So please continue your uh, brand management you know, or brand kits. Yeah, because, you know, this almost becomes the brand brain first of sorts, right? And, you know, people who are familiar to design tools like Canva and others probably would already understand what this is all about where you are setting up your brand kit, adding your logos. If you have created illustrations in different other tools, be it in Adobe, be it on Figma or, or Canva, you know, you can upload your illustrations in here and you can repeatedly use them. You can add your own colors, you can add your own fonts, so on and so forth, right? What it does is basically it ensures that whatever we are creating off your net has, is compliant to how your design system looks like. Right. And of course, therefore, it also gives you speed while creating. The most important part, though, is the whole brand personality layer. Now, if you see in here, there are five or six important questions that we ask of you. One is to sort of explain us what you what is your brand all about? Who do you sell to? Right. As in, so if there is a definition of your buyer group, you know, would certainly recommend users to add that. If you want to sort of train the engine with a sample copy of yours, right? As in, say, if you're a, if you've written a blog which you're very proud of, and you got it perfectly right when it comes to the tone, the tenor, the choice of words, you can actually add that into in in this in this place, and the system will learn from it. You can also define the archetype of your brand to say, hey, this is my archetype. And if you're not sure about what your brand archetype all about, you can suddenly look at the list of you know certain examples which will help you define the archetype of your brand. Uh, folks, this is very, very important when it comes to content marketing because, you know, at times the brand has to, be, to stay true uh, to the archetype, right? So even if you want to be sarcastic or witty while writing it, what the system will do, it will keep those guardrails for you so that, you know, you can be only as witty as a sage should be, right? Or, or an, you know, hero should be. So there are a few important ones that you can certainly do. Then there are advanced configurations as well. Uh, we see a lot of our customers putting in certain very important exclusion keywords. So if you look at all these different AI models that, that have come out in the recent past, they have a certain amount of bias when it comes to words like unlock, unleash, things like that, right? Uh, which is fine, just that they become repetitive after a point. A lot of our customers would come in and put them as exclusion keywords and therefore it will restrict the system to sort of generate those words, right? In 90% cases, it would not, but, you know, uh, in 10% cases, you may still find that the system, you know, the AI didn't listen to you. And that is the, you know, journey that we have to traverse together, right? So this is the most important part when it comes to setting up anything, right? This becomes the brain for all the generation, all the design that you would do with the other later, right? Then comes the publishing layer. Uh, with this, you should be able to publish different events uh, directly to your social media channels, whether they are uh, created within Yarnet or outside. You should be able to publish them. You should be able to publish to different social media channels uh, that you have associated or added to Yarnet. You know, in this case, if you see, uh, it, it is giving me LinkedIn and Twitter. I can upload something from which is done outside. I can generate the title, the description, the hashtags, do all of that. I can schedule my post or I can also publish it right at this point, right? 
this is a completely connected system because you know i'll show you when we go to the design layer you should be able to also design it accordingly you know design it and then publish it right from there yeah i'll take a quick pause and see if you have any questions at this point i think we leave the question at the end because uh, i think sure. we need to flow through the what they call demo first <laughs> I'm, <laughs> i'm taking those quick pauses you know just to sort of <laughs> uh, get you know grab some breath you know of course then the portfolio comes in portfolio is where you will see uh, different content that i might have created published or are in my drafts are all saved in here assets is basically something wherein uh, you can upload all your different files you know whether it is design whether it is images you should be able to upload different things which you can use uh, therefore at the point of creation right then uh, interestingly before you know i get to a specific use case there <coughs> the most or the most uh, interesting feature Uh, or the most popular feature within yarnet is basically the content ideas background remover i'm sure all most of you would be familiar if you want to sort of remove background from a specific asset just to sort of get a clean cut out of your picture uh, of your product you should be able to use the background remover to do that let me sort of get into the content ideas a little bit right so you know if you go to the content ideas what you will see is that there are different things that are getting recommended based on my usage so the system constantly learns from my data what am i creating uh, what did i create last and therefore it is also suggesting different ideas to me based on my previous creation behavior now this is also ai but by the way right now the other one is basically the things that i have generated you know you know things that i can generate at this point right now and if you see there are this different use cases uh, stories that i've created around email marketing yeah now likewise what you can come in uh, what you can do at this point you can generate your own ideas as well right now let's say we are writing a blog at this point right and a couple of terms that i'm adding let's say barbie core right this is this is trending right now now blog i added the couple of keywords there are few things that you would see coming soon onto the product where you could have added a url a link or an upload a document to find ideas generate ideas from there as well now these are these two things if you look at digital marketing and barbie core they are very unrelated terms right now what the system does behind the scenes okay it's very important folks so so that you understand it is going and finding different keywords around these two keywords so it's just not limiting to these two keywords at this point now once it fetches out the different keywords that are trending at this point and where is it fetching that data from so it is going to different trend data sources be it you know google be it uh, you know different other search databases it it could be a youtube search etc and then it sort of feeds that into a idea generation pack you know flow it takes good 30 odd seconds because it is doing all of those things that you typically manually do to you know go to a google keyword find the rankings find out find out what people have asked on those you know keywords and then sort of curate ideas based on that dj is it the real time you <coughs> know because what, uh, what it's something that you know up to date you know it's Let's it's happening you. real time mm -hmm. Which it's, mean, it's, uh, what yeah, say, for it, example, current affairs, as, uh, it will actually take into consideration yeah. of the current affairs that is happening last week or yesterday, right. kind of things. Yeah, absolutely. Is as as real, you know, current as literally the last minute. Okay. Right. So in this case, just give me a moment. Very interesting. Why did it throw up? Sorry, folks. Just give me a moment. Sometimes too much content. <laughs> I do not know what to do. <laughs> no, at at times what what happens is that when the when the search volumes are very very high, it times out, right? Uh, it times out the search, and therefore you'll probably see that one particular error message. 
that shouldn't have happened let me let me do it one more time okay this question may be relevant uh yeah somalia was asking can we generate a copy based on keywords that means yes the content itself not not general idea you know yeah you know i you know let let these ideas come in and you know we'll actually take one of this post and start generating the content as well okay that's good so it's it's a flow so basically uh, to to somalia, somalia and uh, thank you for asking that question with this keywords you should be able to generate ideas right now if yeah. you see this the ideas that it has generated now these are the different you know i would say blog ideas that it is suggesting to me right you know barbie core a paradigm shift in content marketing strategies redefining content marketing for a modern era the you know barbie core the art of crafting irresistible content etc etc right now in this if i check any of these if you see <coughs> you know that there are two keywords that we had given which is barbie core and content marketing what what it also did is that it has found out different words that are going around it right so if you see there is uh, viral content or ugc or influencer collaborations these are different other relevant keywords which are going along with them and if you see what it has done is it has basically given me a quick abstract of what should i do in that particular blog now if i'm okay with this of course uh, there you know i can bookmark it right if i'm not happy i can sort of certainly give that recommendation of like dislike or hide uh, this particular content in itself but say if i like it is there you know, any limit uh, how many content generation uh, idea generation we can do uh, and, you know there, there are limits based on different plans that that we have uh, but you know th th those ideas or the ideas that you can generate i think they're pretty decently big so you know don't you don't have to worry about it Right, but okay. you know, based on different plans, there are there are restrictions on how many ideas that you can generate. Right. So if you look at this, you know, this is Barbie Core. This is my topic. You know, what it has also understood is that what's Barbie Core all about. You know, so it is constantly looking at internet, finding out different information. In this case, you know, it is telling me, you know, this is the content instruction. If I want to add more instructions, let's say, um, audience for my blog. is content marketers yes. right uh, and you know of course i can i could have uh, added more uh, more content instructions to this in, in interest of time i would not sort of go to all the details uh, you can also sort of see the brand that it is active right now so it will write it with the on it in perspective you can choose the tone let's say you know i want to be conversational at this point i also want to choose the length of my blog and say i would i would choose something long there are other advanced uh, features as well wherein you can give certain keywords at this point as well you can also add certain reference text now this is a very very interesting feature folks where you can give a certain text right as a you know just copy paste it you can also add a link or a url so if there is a a uh, post that you are inspired from uh, or you want certain in, in information from you can add that link you can also go ahead and upload a document we will we have seen a lot of our customers use this for repurposing their content say they have written a blog they take that blog you know and then create social media posts of it right and they don't do anything apart from that apart from just sort of adding those information now at this point uh, you, yes yeah interrupt when they say you put the reference material into the prompt right. which means uh, whatever the link or maybe the document your ai actually read those document right that's right that's right so it is reading it is paraphrasing it is creating knowledge nuggets out of it so you can give the information in the form of reference text as a just a you know a bunch of words that you have added you can also actually give a quick web link as well and the system will go and find the information from there Uh, you can also upload a pdf document okay that's fantastic right? now at this point you can go and generate outline or you can also sort of directly generate the content in the interest of time i'll not go to the outline part but you know ask if you ask me majority of our customers because they are very serious about 
what they're writing, they will go and play with the outline, see whether the outline is up to the mark or not, and then accordingly generate it. Okay, while you're waiting for this uh, yep. content to be generated, uh, just answer this question. Sure. Can we generate idea from YouTube by adding URL in the future? Yes, ideally. Right now, we don't do the video part, but if you have a video transcript of it, you can actually add the video transcript in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the, I mean, right now, we let's say we you cannot do the video transcript, but then we have to do the outside with outside Yannick and then put it there. Yes, okay. that's right. Your content so, is generated. Let's yeah, so base, you know, basically what you would see a lot of our customers do at this point, they will take a blog, they will create different tweets out of it. So they will take the tweet as a use case or tweet threads as a use case, right? Uh, and, you know, probably use one of their video script or an audio script or a blog and generate this content from here, right? <clears throat> but coming back to this, of course, you see here that, uh, you know, there are different you know, before I go into that, the, the, it has pretty much written the entire blog, right? As in uh, how, you know, what's, you know, how it has been used, what is that people have done, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now in this, what I can do, for example, I like this, you know, I can expand on it. You think this paragraph is small for you, you know, you can expand, you can shorten it, you can simplify, you can summarize. There are a bunch of editorial functions which are already available to you, to you here, right? At the same time, you know, if I take this as a block, I can also go ahead and generate something new. Let's say I want to write something completely new. I can use the generate with instructions. I can generate different content hooks at this point. Let's say, you know, I want to sort of create a quick uh, anecdote, right? Which is a short story with which I want to start my blog. And you should be able to do that. Now, this is where, uh, to your previous question, Albert, you will see uh, we mm -hmm. have tried to bring in a lot of storytelling elements into this, right? Uh, you know, so, you know, there are certain ways you can start a good story and you should be able to use all of these features, whether uh, it's a question that you're asking to your audience, an antithesis, which is completely opposite, an ideal state statement, you should be able to do all of that. Likewise, how to end a blog could be a moral of the story, could be a takeaway or a tailing question. You should be able to generate all of this, you know, key storytelling elements, so to say, to ensure that your, your you know, your piece of content is actually uh, hitting the right notes. Yeah. Now, what's happening parallelly, if you see, it is also finding the relevant images that I could add to my story. Now, some of this could be related to actually Barbie course. Some of this could be related to, you know, content marketing, because these are different, there are different things that it is tending to, right? So it is, if you see, there are different images which the AI, is, AI layer is looking at it and giving us information, right? Likewise, you will also see research materials coming your way, which you can also use. Right, so research materials could be, you know, links or blogs uh, that has uh, that are popular around this particular subject, and you can add them to the blog. And you know, if you if you are in the business of content marketing, you understand how important are the backlinks for you. So you can actually add them in here. You can also, you know, put them as in the form of quick statistics, which only adds to your uh, adds to your content and the credibility of your content. JD, Codes, icons, so on. Yeah, JD, sure. let right. me interrupt. JD. Right. Okay, just now you're talking about certain facts, you know, that you have a, what I call yeah. a, a retrieve, you know? Yeah, okay. Research. Uh, yeah, research. Uh, re research. Are they hard facts or are they just generated by AI? No, they are absolutely. So we work, we partner with different market research agencies uh, to actually source these results for you. Okay, right? that's good if you because... Want, uh, People yeah. are talking about a lot of, it's not purposely create fake news, but rather than, you know, this yeah. is a hallucinated by this AI generator, you know, he says something that, you right. know, it's not actually facts, you know, it's actually uh, what yeah. he yeah. imagined, you know. So if you say that this no, is a real fact, then it's good. This is this is as real as you see August 28, 2023, mm -hmm. right? So these are literally statistics that are coming in your way and you can add that to your story. Right. So, for example, in this, it talks about Greta Gerwig, uh, you know, earning so many amount of dollars. The movie has done so well. 
right? So it is giving you statistics which are facts, right, and not fiction, right? And it only adds credibility to your story. Now, what you can do, of course, there are plenty of things that you can do on that. The plus button itself is a magic. You can generate new section. You can rephrase it. So if you don't like this section, you want to sort of change the tonality of it, you should be able to do that <coughs> as well. Um, while you're writing it, you can also audit your content. Now, this is another function of AI that you would see. You know, this is the quickest way of doing an A-B testing at this point, right? To tell you who can read your content. When we say expert readability, we refer to somebody who can read an HBR because although the topic is Barbie core, et cetera, but it is uh, simple and, you know, it is, it demands certain bit of readability. At the same time, you know, what's the impact that it is likely to have on your audience, whether it is grabbing attention, making you feel triumphant, demanding action, so on and so forth, right? Now, you can use all of this to sort of do quick changes in your copy as well and see, you know, if you make certain changes, what, you know, is are those scores becoming any better or not, right? And at this point, of course, you can download this. Now, this is one such example, folks, uh, you know, if I, if I show you another one, and, and I would love for you to try it yourself, give us more feedback, what could we do better, et cetera. Let's say, you know, I'm creating a carousel post uh, on link for LinkedIn right now. Um, and let's say my topic is trends in digital marketing, right? What, what you will see, these are custom crafted templates, right? Which will give you certain nudges to say, what do you want as an introductory slide? What do you want as main points? How many slides should you want? You want? And what is the, you know, what is the CTA? Let's say, uh, follow Yanet for more trends, right? At www.yanet.app. Now for all your design use cases, what's important is that, you know, we'll ask you as in what is the format that you're looking for? Say, for example, in this case, if you want a carousel post, which is just paragraph, 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 you could do that. If you're creating an ad, you want a heading paragraph and a CTA at the same time. Or if you're just looking for a heading paragraph, you could do that. Majority, you know, most of the folks would go and probably design it themselves, but you want to sort of use that AI system. What it would do for you, it will not only write it, it will visually compose things for you as well. JD, now I can understand why you say is this is a five in one two, you know. So it's a real five in one two. I mean, before this webinar, I was actually have doubts, you know. I mean, a lot of marketers or uh, maybe founder will say a lot of uh, heaven and sky thing, you know. So I mean, after uh, watching your what they call demo, now I understand that you know it's, it's actually five in one two. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I at least made one customer today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't mind telling you, uh, previously, uh, Rocket Hub also promoted one tool, uh, generative AI right. to call Magai. You know, they right. call it Magai. I don't know whether you know it. Magai actually right. uh, quite similar, but they have uh, many right. things that you are not doing. Uh, many things, right. uh, no, many things that you are doing, they are not doing. Okay. At first, right. uh, they yeah. actually want to do some brand personality. Uh, you have actually right. done it, but I'm not sure whether they have done that. You know, so they are actually starting to do it. You know, brand personality. That's important. It's right. just like, you no, know, we are trying to define what is your brand. Then whatever right. uh, content you are trying to generate will based on that. You know, it's just like you know your own right. personality. So there is one right. question that is asked uh, by this uh, uh, Nas. The, the question is actually related. He's talking about. Customer persona. Can you generate customer oh. persona? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's an interesting part. Uh, that's, you know, interesting that you asked. Uh, right now, uh, we assume that the customer persona is something the brand would be aware of, but we have come across uh, this request wherein uh, folks have asked us, "Can you also build a customer persona for us?" Right. Yes. And that's that is important. something that is, yeah. Uh, you know, that is something that is in our roadmap. We're happy to sort of help and build. See, a lot lot of the information that we ask you on the on the brand kit or the brand personality today 
is in, we presume that you have that information, but we have come across a customer request to say, why don't you also help us build that, right? And we are taking certain, uh, you know, we are trying to sort of add to that in our roadmap too. So not there in us today, uh, hopefully in future for sure. Yeah, that, that will be a very good uh, development because we have a brand right. personality who, who know what he, right. the, the brand's all about and he try to right. know the customer, then that will be perfect. Right. You know, every time you do some content that is very in right. line with the brand, in line with the customer mm -hmm. perception, in line with the customer mm -hmm. requirement. Mm -hmm. Well, while that happened, something happened at my end. Just give me a moment. Sure. Da -da -da -da. Let me sort of follow you on it. At da -da 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 -app. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Medium. I'm going to go ahead and design it with AI. Okay, guys, uh, while we're waiting for the generation to complete, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of uh, interesting questions, you know, so we will actually try to sure. answer that, you know. So, Absolutely. Okay, yeah, the canvas size. Yeah, so the canvas size, there are four uh, sizes that we work with today. Uh, one is the 90s to 16. Uh, 16 is to 9, 1 is to 1, and 4 is to 5. And you can scale it uh, to different needs, right? Um, now, just, just sort of, I, I'll come back to that question. <laughs> so we don't allow custom canvas size at this point because the idea was to sort of reduce, make it as simple as possible. Uh, but we we are, uh, that is again a feedback that we have heard enough. So we might as well bring it uh, to the product where somebody can sort of choose custom sizes as well. Right, to your, uh, just to sort of complete my flow in here, folks. Uh, if you see what it has done, it has found the best pictures uh, for my uh, for my story. It has put that in the form of a visual, com you know, uh, communication. It has also written the copy in a way that you know that is suited for how it should be written in social media, right? Uh, a lot of this choices, the choice of color that you see, is actually happening based on you know what the brand color that I have chosen. It has also put in my logo at the right place. So there's no debate around where the logo should go, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it has also sort of uh, added the CTA, which I need. Now, at this point, of course, you can go and you know find different searches, et cetera. If you go to the images tab, uh, you can also find images uh, for yourself. If you like something, you can search for it. If you don't like, you can do simple drag and drop to sort of replace the image, right? Uh, also, you will find different layouts. Now, there are layouts which are, uh, there are certain smart layouts, right? Which is which is basically a visual composition. So if I say, for example, uh, change this with this, it will take the shape of this particular, you know, uh, visual composition that you have, right? Or, you know, for example, I change this to this, you know, it will take, the text and it will sort of put it in the same form, right? Uh, versus you would also have templates in here. The templates are slightly different. They work slightly differently because templates will also retain the images for you, right? Uh, the images that are already part of the template. So you can, of course, there's a growing list. We keep on adding more and more templates for our users to sort of power their use cases. There are different varieties of it. You can try and search with them. Uh, there are themes. Uh, and then, of course, there's a whole lot of it, right? You can also sort of bring in your own assets. So if you have pictures, et cetera, that you want to use, uh, you can sort of use them, drop, drag and drop it. You know, itself, the essential layers, you know, we, we the essential layer, if you see, uh, is quite powerful because you will see all the different modern shapes in here. You know, for example, let me show something to you folks. If I go in and let's say I add a slide to the right, you know, I can take any of these shapes and say, you know, put that as a frame 
um, you know, add my picture into it, you know, say basically if I set this as a frame, uh, it will work as a clip path. And I can say, for example, if I go in and add my own picture in here, you know, you'll probably see my photograph in here too. So a lot many times we are doing the speaker presentations, et cetera, where you need to put in the mugshot, headshot. You can actually work with a lot of these different shapes and work with them, right? Uh, likewise, the text box, the text box is very important for us. So for example, uh, everything that, every text box that I add has an AI inbuilt in it, right? So you can go in and you can generate something in some instructions. Uh, let's say, write a slogan for Yanit, right? And be witty, let's say, or be short. I can generate this. Right, so it has written the different slogans that you see, right? I can add them to the canvas and this is already added in my text box, right? So the text box works in a in a very intuitive fashion. You can use it. Uh, everything that we have generated, whether the copy, whether it is the heading, etc., you will see them in here. So, you know, even if you, if you lose any context or content, uh, you should be able to generate from here as well. Right, you can sort of retrieve them back from here. The editing layer is where you will see all the different editing things, whether it is using the different color filters, etc., uh, using gradients, do all of that, you know, um, adjust your images. You know, let's say, for example, I want to make the black and white, I should be able to do that. I'm sure all of you are very an expert in, in doing all of this. Right? Likewise, we have the most comprehensive icon library that you would see. You can use all of these icons uh, to also sort of generate good content, right? Uh, as you know, at the same time, audit player is also active in here. You can sort of uh, use your content uh, and look at what exactly it is doing for at a individual slide level, right? Uh, so for example, what is my last slide? This last slide is demanding action and that is exactly how I want my CTA to be, right? So it is constantly informing you what you're doing, whether it is making sense or you should do any better, right? And at the same time, now I can go ahead and literally publish this uh, with a click or maybe two clicks. You know, see if, if you see all the different slides are in here, I can generate the content for myself, generate the description, the hashtags, and then, you know, literally publish it. DJ. There is one question from the audience as well. Sure. Uh, is, sure. Can this Yanni uh, produce a kind of a PowerPoint presentation? It in should 16, be. Yeah. 16 9 format. Yeah, 16 is to 9. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, the answer to that question, although I say yes, but let me give that clarification. That's pretty much end of the demo that I had to show. So let me sort of go back and take the questions now. Right. Uh, if required, I can come back to this. Mm -hmm. So presentations, yes, you should be able to not only create your presentation, but also use this for presentation. So if you go to the preview mode or if you go to your portfolio from the portfolio layer itself, you should be able to present it. Right. Uh, the only limitation at this point is that uh, and to be, in all honesty, you should not be we can, you cannot download that as a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> right, you can download them as a PDF, so that's a limitation at this point that we have. But yeah, but as far as we have seen, our customers do all their presentations from here, generate it, uh, you know, save them as PDF, use this as a presentation layer, share links with their customers uh, as a as a you know uh, as as a standalone link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's good, you know. But do consider to actually, I mean, uh, in a PowerPoint or maybe. A Google presentation is actually the most popular uh, presentation format in the world. So do consider right. to, to do that in future. Right. I think I see a question from Nas, uh, you know, which is around image carousals. You just saw that, Nas. I think image carousals is something that I just showed uh, you. Mm -hmm. Video is something that is certainly in there, um, you know. Uh, video, video is in our roadmap, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully. 
you know, we, we, you know, if you see the world is divided between video and the rest of the content, mm -hmm. right now it is rest of the content. Video is something that we would certainly bring in. Okay. Uh, before we actually go into the question proper, there are so many questions. We have learned, you know, uh, how to generate ideas, how to write the content, how to design the content, and how to what I call audit the content. It's come automatically from from the one yeah. when I write. But you missed out the last publishing you know i know you can publish to various social media you know i just tried before right. this webinar so can you go into that because people like to yeah, know yeah i was just i was i was just showing that actually sorry i i might have rushed through that um, you have to share your screen again because i think your screen is yeah, yeah that's fine that's fine um, okay. you know if I, <clears throat> so this is where i was i can go and publish my content from here itself i had covered the publishing layer right at the start but even in here, if you see, uh, there are two channels that are connected to my account, which is LinkedIn and Twitter. Let's say I want to sort of do it for LinkedIn. I can generate uh, the title. I can generate the description of that particular post and then schedule it as well. Right. So if you see this, this, this has generated the quick caption for me. Uh, it has also found out the relevant uh, hashtags that are relevant for that particular medium. So in, an important disclaimer here, folks, I think, Although a lot, there's a lot of demand on automating, I would recommend to do it by channel because when something is getting generated, you know, when we are doing a cookie cutter, you know, where we're mm -hmm. taking every, all the different channels into one account, uh, the description will be, uh, you know, a cookie cutter kind of a, you know, description because we are taking that probably fits every channel. Uh, instead, you know, I would probably recommend to do it channel by channel where you will see the description, also the hashtags to be relevant to that particular channel or the medium. Right. And, you know, at this point, I can go in and schedule my post, uh, find the different calendar whenever I want to do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty much if I want to sort of publish it right now, I can go ahead. But personally, if you ask me, I'll, I'll do a little bit of editing before I do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. good to do some editing to look through the content, you know. Because once yeah, posted, absolutely. it's difficult to pull back. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Because, you know, as much as you train, I'm a big proponent of that. It's a force multiplier. Uh, it's not something that is going to sort of completely uh, remove, take take you out of the loop. So uh, please uh, look through the details, uh, add your own content as well, and then, you know, publish it. You know, create, you know, people should, world should know your stories. Okay, guys, uh, I have actually posted the link to the giveaway participation form. Uh, please go ahead and uh, fill up the form. Three questions, you know, then we will draw the winners later. Right. Uh, I, I think I, you know, how should we go about the questions, Albert? Um, yes, we can go to the question now. So we can always, uh, can uh, you... Let me start. Uh, let me start from the top. Uh, yeah, yes, there is a lot of questions, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, I think the export feature to PowerPoint in presentation, sure, uh, you know, that is something that we are getting asked for, would love to sort of bring it, it will take probably a little bit of time um, for us to sort of get there, because there are very interesting features that are coming our way. Um, one is the analytics layer, which is due a release in the next uh, 10 days, you should see that uh, the analytics layer would bring in all your media analytics to tell you how did your post do, why did it do well, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, can we automate social media once we train the AI? Um, uh, Alex, <laughs> I would recommend not to not to automate. Uh, you know, you can. You can certainly, you saw the scheduling part, you should be able to do that. But, uh, you know, please have, please have a look at whatever you're creating before you do that, right? Uh, can we create a template standard to be used for future generations? You should be able to do that, yes. Uh, slides a little similar to Predis. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, good that you, you know, it brought that uh, similarity. Uh, but if you see what what you know, our USP always has been around that whole brand personalization layer, uh, giving you a content as recent as today. Can it be pre-created and ask for approval? Yes. So there is an approval workflow. Uh, so if you get into the you know platform, you would see, uh, you know, uh, there is a workflow where you can assign different teammates. If you if you're going for a teams or an advanced plan in the in the Rocket Hub, uh, 
uh, thing. Uh, you will see, you can assign somebody as a creator, publisher, so you have those approval mechanisms as well. Right? Okay. Can we design Maybe we have files to, for? You have to scroll up, you know, because those are the yeah, last question. Yeah. yeah, we have to scroll up. Yeah, can we use SVG files for a design? Uh, right now, it is it is restricted to JPEG and PNG, Kevin. Uh, if we change the text font size position, can we save this as a template for all future images? Yes, so you know the on the on the ray. Uh, if I understand your question right, you should be able to do that. And you know, once you go to the brand setup design kit, you can actually set it up to say your heading should be forty-two uh, or you know whatever size you want, and your subheading should be like this. So it will understand and put it automatically. Um, now I think I answered your question, Sujit. Uh, can you bring our own Canva account, especially the background event is less. Uh, uh, no, you can't bring your know, Canva <laughs> account in here. Uh, but I understand where you're coming from. Look, as in background remover, for as a matter of fact, you can use uh, a lot of uh, libraries also to remove the background. So that's an added feature anyway. Um, you know, would, but no, no, we couldn't have done that. I mean, um, let me comment something, you know. Even though we called it five in one, two, but we cannot replace Canva, you know, kind of because right. Canva is the whole a, a designer, you know. So yeah, as in, look, oh, the whole purpose of Canva is, uh, I'm, you know, I, I've, I've used Canva myself, so I'm not going to, you know, uh, uh, talk any trash on them. But uh, the whole promise of Canva is very different versus what Yarnit is supposed to do. It is around marketing. We want to sort of train our AI engines to be more marketing forward rather than design forward and we understand the creative design is a part of it so if you see a lot of our capabilities today are around you to sort of give you speed you know if you look at i cannot go and create a you know business card with the admit right which a canva would you know this is exactly what it is meant for for all your design needs uh, can I train Yanni to factor in my demographic and psychographic and reference this all for the features? Yes, you can. You, you should be able to do that, uh, Nas, right? Uh, can we create infographics using the generated content? Yes, infographics is a use case that we are bringing in. You should be able to create your infographic if you go to in a freestyle version. Uh, but we are also sort of, uh, you know, uh, create your own stuff. You know, we, we are bringing a few use cases specific to infographic templates. Um, yeah, no, I think Pyong, Pyong, I think I've answered presentation you can create. Does it have content spinner to reword what the output? Yes, that's what the rephrase is for. Uh, so if you go and click the rephrase part, you, you should be able to rephrase any piece of content. Can we re-personalize and to learn from your bar and act type? Yes, absolutely, Kevin. Uh, you should be able to do that. Yeah, that's the, whole is the purpose of, of the brand personality. Yeah, okay. Right. Can anyone share the form link? I'm sure Albert would do that. Uh, can you automate the post? Yeah, I, th I think we, we've gone through that pro, Alex. Um, right, can this be planned on screen and does it update live? Yes, uh, Ray, uh, it, it absolutely happens on live. Uh, you can literally remove entire text and write, uh, write something. It will uh, you know, completely generate a new score for you. How do you train the AI? I can see some very generic AI-ish words, uh, like when it comes in the beginning of other paragraphs. Yes, uh, that's right, Sujit. Uh, you know, and that, therefore, uh, you know, th the hacks are basically to sort of also use uh, some of those brand capabilities where you can add certain exclusion words, etc., so that you don't say this. Look, as in the generic capability of all these language words, you know. You can train them, configure them, fine tune them, but there are certain corpus on which they are built, right? So you cannot just sort of take that particular characteristic away. So there is certain limitations to it, but we, we take care of that from the fine tuning layer. Yeah, yes, Pankaj, thanks for, yeah, thanks for liking that. You know, I'm, I'm very, that's very personally very close to me. Uh, image generator is good for SEO. Yes, absolutely. That I hold promises to sort of help you find relevant images. No, what he means, uh, uh, what lovely meaning is uh, alternate text and also the image name, the title of the mm, keywords. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, <laughs> no, not, 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 
<laughs> not not really not at this point but uh, you know maybe sometime in the future well that's an interesting one actually you know something that i'm making a note of yeah okay okay uh, for repurposing yes i think repurposing is you know right now what i showed you the whole reference material is one of those hacks uh, of how to repurpose it but we are making that whole repurpose as a separate feature altogether right mm -hmm. um, right and right um, now i think uh, you we have uh you know, thank you i sorry i don't see your name but thank you for uh, giving a shout out to our website well with voice image so look as in we are not doing image generation at this point uh, so we partner with different uh, stock libraries to sort of give you those images in in the ltd plans and to be honest all honesty because you might when you go to the ltd plans you might see uh, premium stock images not not available uh, and you know it's something that is out of our hands because we work with these partners and they do not sort of uh, allow us to get you know bring in premium images uh, but you should be able to, you know there are more than 4 million plus images free images that that are there to you so you know i do that on on to your question where are we bring you know maybe i'm something giving away uh, quickly as a part of our roadmap we are bringing uh, ai art uh, right but we want to get it very very right uh, because there is a lot lot of noise you know people are working with big journeys and stability etc uh, we are making it very very specific to how brands and content work right so it's not about creating uh, those fanciful images but making it very very useful to how you produce content can we, uh, can we what type of question uh, what type of document and file are supported what type of document uh, pdf file format i think file format they were talking about. oh file format i think it's png jpeg um, and pdf and word uh, microsoft word for your blogs mm -hmm. and anything to do with writing alone okay nas is yeah. asking this SEO question basically is in the ideation uh, generation. Right, idea. right. So it's it's actually doing the proxy SEO now, right? As in, if you if you look if you understand the process there, and I think you have also already mentioned about SERP, etc. So we go through different search uh, databases based on the customer demographics. So we also go to e-commerce websites. Uh, you know, we go to different other data sources for trend data sources, etc to find the relevant keywords, to find the relevant consumer queries, and then use all of that to generate ideas. So it's doing that as a proxy for you. OK, this question is more on the SEO <laughs> content cluster. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going ideas. down, actually. I'm going down. Are you reading from the top, uh, Albert, <laughs> as in? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Look at the screen, the I video screen. We, video screen okay the question is yeah okay i don't see that as uh while well, creating idea does it allow us to create content oh, okay yes uh, content clusters wow we uh, no uh, <laughs> so did something that again um thanks for giving that idea you know thanks for giving that idea uh certainly uh, it's an important thing to think about we don't do that right now but yeah something you might see in in the future okay so this question is related to your roadmap for the next two months what are you going to add new features yeah uh, like, like i said you know the analytics is one part that are that is coming uh, really really soon uh, you should be there are a few other features that we are working on uh, especially on the ai art side uh, so you should see that as well you know, of course, we will honor and all our all our LTD buyers as well to sort of uh, have a have a have a part in in our future releases as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This question, I think, is uh, you look at the video screen. The long form, definitely, uh -huh. you can put in the H one tag, H two tag, H three tag yourself. So. <laughs> Can I input my own H2, H3 tag? Absolutely. So the editor itself works as any other, uh, you know, editor that you might have seen on Medium and other stuff. So you should be able to format it uh, in different uh, heading formats. 
Okay, this question is uh, very relevant because uh, there are so many uh, startups that close down after one year, half a year, six months or whatever. You know? So they're asking about your sustainability as a company, as, as a company. Right. Um, you know, we. Uh, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> of course, you know, if on the five years, uh, you know, oh, sorry, Somalia, you know, I don't want to sort of uh, be the fortune teller at this point for uh, <laughs> finding out what would be for the next five years. Because if you look at the space of AI, every month we are adding something new, something great. Uh, so five years. Uh, is, make, is a it difficult years, uh, make it two years better. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> two years better. Yeah, so I can tell you something as in good that you asked that question as in what's our roadmap. Look, as in we want to be the closest when it comes to how content is created for marketing domain, right? The idea is to become a content creation app which is truly, truly meant for businesses and teams and who are serious content creators, right? Uh, two, you know, Majority of our customer base today, you will see large enterprises, uh, you know, billion dollar and above enterprises who are using it within within their platform. So, you know, uh, Somalia, to your question, I think there is some inspiration that we get from large enterprises too. So we are doing good on that side. Uh, yeah, and like I said, from a roadmap perspective, uh, since we want to get closer to how content is created, the idea is to sort of also expand in terms of creatives right uh, make things simpler for certainly right because once you see an app like this which is five in one it might sound you know uh, overwhelming at some point so how do we simplify the journey uh, for for our users e-learning courses or yes of course a lot if you should be able to do that what i mean uh, what, what he mean is latif uh, latif i think he is in e-learning uh, business right. so when you say that e-learning content means uh maybe to churn out content you know but then ai content might be i would say very plain you know so i'm not too sure what is this question you know a lot if possible right can, so mm. yeah we can certainly have a chat of offline as well Latif. i think but if you ask me presentations are one of the favorite use cases see a lot of the detail around your content is actually when you go to the content instructions layer the more information you give to the system, the more to the point or on the point uh, content it is able to generate, right? Otherwise, it is if it, if you just give headings and etc., it will try to sort of create something with the understanding that it has, right? But if you are creating something for e-learning, I might I would certainly encourage you to sort of use the content instructions uh, meticulously uh, so that it should be able to generate good work. Okay. Okay, I think you have answered most questions. Let let me let us scroll down to the bottom, you know, because those are the latest questions. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Can we generate ideas for YouTube? I think I have answered that. Can we generate ideas from? Okay, like... maybe we just Justin is asking this question. The last question. I don't know. Those can be used for a lot of more than can be. My imagination running. So just Justin is trying. Yes, to Yes, Justin. I think. I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's like those parallel uses of medicine. Uh, you will see in allopathic medicine, people uh, there there are recommended uses of certain medicine, and then they are also used for treating other diseases. Is a Panadol. <laughs> Panadol. <laughs> Panadol. You no, know, Panadol can cure a lot of disease. You know. Right. 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 Absolutely. Uh, okay. Would would certainly look forward to how you use it. Okay, uh, come back to this uh, serious question. Can we create ebook in the future? <clears throat> yeah, so see, uh, the whole ebook, I think uh, the previous question was also on the you know, uh, e learning thing. Um, a lot of would de depend on how much, how much content we are adding. Uh, for an ebook at this point, uh, you can do that, right? But if you're writing re literally research pieces, long research pieces, white papers, ebooks, I would probably encourage you to break it down into sections, right? Rather than creating one uh, monolithic content from here, right? Because there are certain you know restrictions that AI would also have, and therefore break it down into sections and then create one by one. Okay. So the next question. Uh, sorry, this custom template. I believe we're talking about the 
the writing custom template or maybe other custom template right so you know there are things that are that is there on the pipeline to where you should be able to sort of upload your templates as well and make them you know you can upload them in the form of pngs today which you can use as a background uh, but you know we are also bringing in the uh, feature of adding custom templates which you might have built outside and you can import that onto yarnet as a uh, for your use does it have and, a uh, import in like canva Mm. Um, I you know, as in, sorry, I've not checked out uh, the Canva feature yet, as in on the when it comes to the bulk import. But um, if you're saying, can you download multiple projects at one go? Uh, no, I don't think you can do that right now. You can you have to download it project by project. Oh, bulk import, you say? Uh, you mean, uh, Fabrice? If I understand your question, you mean Images adding a new template? Whatever. Oh, yes, yes, you should be able to do that. And that's the upload feature with which you should be able to do that. Okay, this is a different question. You know? Alex was asking, <laughs> would there be a WP plugin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the, the are limited. The problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think, you yeah, know, uh, you know, I see that one of the reasons we didn't go that down that lane because a lot of CMS platforms are different uh, today, right? As in, of course, if you solve for WordPress, you'll probably solve for 50% uh, of the universe, uh, you know, on the CMS side. But uh, yes, yeah, maybe as a plugin later. Okay, someone asked this question. Scan the QR code. Okay, the one in the QR code is actually for the participation form, giveaway participation form, because some people are uh, cannot find the form, so that's why we, we yeah. use this feature. You, know? you scan that code, it will bring you to the participation form, just for information. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I think we have all the question answers. So we are 15 minutes uh, over short. So don't worry. Uh, let me do my job now. Uh, DJ, uh, JD, sorry, <laughs> JD, yeah. please. So no, that's fine. I want to, happy to be the DJ for the session today. <laughs> Just check the chat. Yeah. You know, any additional question, guys? You can ask additional question while I'm actually collecting your name to be put in the wheels of name. Give me a few minutes because they have a forty over names, which means forty over people are actually here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there are a few questions of the video, folks. I think video is something uh, yes. that uh, we we plan to bring in. Uh, we just want to do it right, so probably you know you have to wait for a little longer uh, before you get that. Right now, it's text and graphics. Um, multiple brands, of course, you can do that on the higher plans. Uh, Clarice, what can I generate content even made based on pets? Absolutely, that's Mabel. That's uh, the answer to your question, as in, can it generate content tailored made based on brand? Absolutely, that's the promise. Okay, this question is, do you have a desktop version? Because now, because you are in a SaaS, so do you have a screen? Right. Yeah, no, no, we don't have a desktop version. I think uh, we just uh, have the web version for now. I think if you ask me for, for us, uh, one interesting thing probably in our roadmap, and I'm putting no putting no time to it would be creating a mobile version of it for you to sort of do those uh, quick use cases, solve for that. Uh, you should be able to sort of uh, do it through uh, or through mobile phone. So, you know, mobile, mo mobile devices would be our second use case when it comes to form factor. Okay. So guys, I think you can see the, our, Views of name where we are going to spin uh, two winners, uh, seventy nine dollars uh, value of this uh, first year uh, DD. So let's check the name again. Uh, let's sort the name, and see whether any repeated names. Well, this is interesting. I mean, this is uh, we call it random name generator. I mean, views of name we call it. Okay, so I think we have everybody there. 
So we have a lot of people today. We are more than 45 people. So I think one or two even put in the name. So that's no worry. Let's shuffle and we will spin two times. So the winner will actually get one license uh, Yannick LTD for free. And also the second winner also get it uh, for free. And if you don't win uh, today's uh, Facebook Live uh, LTD, you can actually go to the Facebook comment post which actually there will be three prizes, you know, two first tier and the third, uh, the third prize will be, uh, not the third prize, the last prize will be the grand prize will be the highest tier, tier two. Okay, let's uh, spin now. Is okay, JD? Yeah, yeah, please feel free to do so. I'm, I'm just enjoying this wheel, <laughs> whatever you're doing with it. Let, let, let's uh, shuffle it, you know, and let's go. Wow. Oh, no, Muhammad. I don't see, I don't know, is a lady or is a man, you know. So, it's a new person. So, can you type your name? You are around. If not, then we will spin again, you know. So, no, Muhammad, you are a lucky winner. So, the winner must be present. Claim the prize, you know, or else. Uh, Oh, I don't see your name, Facebook user. Can you give permission to this? Uh... I know, so let me check. No, Muhammad. Yeah, okay. You should have given permission to this uh, Facebook uh, to restream to show your name and uh, photo. So it's okay. No problem. I actually confirm. I look at another screen. I'll remove your name. Congratulations. Uh, no. Let's spin the second time. Let's shuffle. Let's go. Jeffrey Ano. This is Congratulations, uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Ano. So, are you there to claim the prize? Jeffrey, if you're there, please type your name in the chat. Jeffrey, Ano. Because sometimes people just put their name and go home, you know? Oh, you are there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Congratulations, Jeffrey. So, so we have the two winners. Uh, let's remove the name. And this is the result. First winner is No Muhammad. And second is uh, Jeffrey Ano. Thank you for being a winner. So, congratulations. Let's uh, conclude this uh, webinar. And before we actually, what do you call, uh, say goodbye, I would like to say a few words, you know, about this uh, Yanni, you know, five in one tools. As I said, you know, you can replace, I won't say replace, you can actually do a work of uh, Predis. You know, a lot of people have bought Predis before, long, long time ago. Uh, Predis AI, I, I believe you know. And then, of course, Canva. And then all the AI writers, and things that I'm actually very interested in actually the ideation uh, part, you know, where you actually have the brand, a personality, where you can actually craft your brand. Every time you want to do some certain things on your brand, you actually use that like a uh, persona, you know, but it's actually not the customer persona, but called a brand personality. So now the missing link will be the customer persona. So job for JD, you know. So the last yeah, one, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they call it uh, publishing, you know. So I've actually tried to link it to some of my account. I haven't tested it, you know. But uh, I want to ask uh, JD, the the publishing, uh, what they call platform, is it your own or is it somebody else? Is a uh, it's called so, it, yeah, the, else. yeah. So there are uh, there are a couple of them. We use a few third party ones uh, mm -hmm. where you know which are not our own. And for few channels, we have built it ourselves. So there, there would be a mix of both, mm -hmm. uh, right? Uh, but the idea is to sort of build it from uh, everything on our side. But uh, as of today, we work, a few of our workloads are with a third party partner and a few are with us. Okay, so guys, uh, that's it, you know? So if you are interested to buy this uh, deal, I actually projected this up, you know, Yanit, uh, lifetime deal in the video, scan the link, uh, scan the QR code, you bring it to the LTD page. Or you want, you can actually 
let me put it in yeah, the, the caption, you know. Okay, the, the deal link is here. Okay, it's, or maybe here. <laughs> yeah, good. So today we have uh, many, many, uh, what they call, participants. I think they speak uh, well that, you know, this is something that, you know, they are looking for. I believe that this is something that they are very similar to Magai, but I think he do a lot more than Magai. But I have not been touching Magai for two months, you know, so, but I do not know the progress. But guys, uh, this is something uh, refreshing. It's not just another AI generator. You have every day, I would say, without fail, uh, AI generator come into place, uh, come into the market. You know? So this is not another one. This is something different. So they call it Yannick, five-in-one generative AI platform. Go and try it. It's a free free trial or free uh, free tier, if I'm not wrong, you know, with some limits. So if you will like it, just buy it, you know. If not, just consider before it ends in the this uh, rocket hub. So before we end, uh, JD, you have any parting words uh, for the audience or anything to want to say? No, thank, thank you so much for joining in, folks, and uh, spending the time with us. Uh, you've given us more than an hour, which is which is a huge part of part from your busy schedule. Uh, would love to see you uh, try the platform, give us more feedback. Look, as in, I already have a bunch load of things to do in the product from our discussion today, and we can only become better from where we were yesterday, right? So, you know, the promise is to sort of help you uh, do more with your content, create great stories for your customers. So please uh, be with us in the journey mm -hmm. and happy to sort of answer your questions, take your feedback, uh, you know, uh, do shoot us an email if you have more thoughts on the product and what we should do. Uh, happy to consider them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, you so much for your time. Lovely talk. One last question for, for you. Uh, yeah. How long yeah. have your team actually built this, uh, Yanni, you know, from the first until now? Right. Yeah, I think very interesting. I think we, we did our first round of funding, Albert, in uh, June last year, May to June, because before that, we had spent enough time to sort of research the product out what we wanted to build and why uh, you know it took us good nine months to sort of build the product out right as in because we wanted to bring all the right features together and we have been in in the market for the last four or five months like i said you know enterprise segment large enterprises are one of our key customer segment and we have built it with them uh, but again short answer to your question nine months and we are still building it right so because uh, uh, this product is not, uh, you know, over in nine months. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a constant process, right? As in every every week, every month, you will see new things coming coming your way. Yeah, I, I mean, I just want to add, you know, because from nine months to twelve to to twelve months or one year, you have built actually a very solid product, you know, because it's very very polished. I would say very very polished, you know. I mean, you will look at the back end, yeah. you know, and the way it works, you know. So congratulations. <laughs> No, absolutely. And there are a few things, interesting things coming. We are making a product and launch as well uh, later this month uh, on, on really, uh, I think on 20th of this month. And you will see some new fresh things coming your way as well. Yeah. Mm, that's good. That's good. Okay. One more question from this Justin, you know. Yeah, sure. No, he, he said that, you know, the coupon, you know, there is an early bird 20% coupon has expired. Definitely, you know, it has expired, you know, I think for two weeks. So the only yeah. way is I have to talk to Charlie or maybe just uh, JD, you might want to talk to Charlie uh, to extend or maybe to <laughs> to give us a, a, another sure. short sting, you know, of a 20% coupon. I'm not sure. <laughs> I cannot promise, you know. This yeah. is all depend on uh, Rocket Hub uh, platform, you know. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, folks, I also don't control that part a lot. <laughs> I will certainly uh, put a word to Charlie. I think Albert, you have more good offices with Charlie than me, uh, so <laughs> please do drop in a word. Okay, and, uh, I will talk to happy. him. I, yep. I, maybe he's actually listening. I was watching, you know, so I do not know. <laughs> All right, if Charlie, if you're watching, uh, you know, please cut folks a discount. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, thank you for your present. You know, this is the one and a half, almost one and a half hours, and we have a, a very interesting uh, demo by this uh, JD and. Congratulations to the winners and also thank you very much for JD for sponsoring the prizes and also walk us through the whole... My uh, pleasure. My course. pleasure. And we'll see you again uh, in other, maybe another time. Bye-bye. Absolutely. You know, thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.